we're going to head into question two of the May exam for 2013. Um, it's the OOP question. I was very tempted to sing you a Britney Spears OOP I Did Again song, but I thought I want you to hear the rest of the video, so I decided not to do that. So here we go. Now, the OOP question has two main parts to it all, every single time they ask it. The first part will have to do with creating the object. The second part will be using the object in some sort of program. Now, they have given us the program. Over here, they've given Happy Snappy Photo Development. So they've given us the program that we're going to be using the object. But before we can get to that, we have to do the, the, the first part, which is creating the object. And if you get to the data, they tell you of this text file, which is going to have all the details that we're going to put into an object. Now, please take note. It's from a text file. Here is an example of the text file. Now, although they're referring to the text file already, you do not need to reference or do anything with the text file until you get to the second part of the OOP question, which is the using the class or object. The reason for that is that we are actually creating a class to handle just one of these records, just one line from each text file. So there's actually no need to worry about text file handling until the second part of the question. So don't do anything text file here. You just work with the object as if you were working with just one of these. Now, as we can see, they're going to ask us to create a, a unit. Sometimes they give you a class that you just have to add the code. Um, in this case, they haven't, so we've got to create it ourselves. So I'm going to go to Delphi. I'm going to go File, New Unit. And yeah, they've set up the unit. I'm going to just save this quickly. They've asked us to, they've told us how to save it. Yes, we must, well, that's in the folder. And they've mentioned that we must make another unit called Class print unit so I will use that name so we're gonna have the unit called that and we will save it as that save as and we'll save it in the folder where we've got it so there we go we use the same name it's all one word yes so there we go our class order print unit so now we're going to get into the creation of it. Now we've got to create, once we've done that, now we need to create the appropriate named field types. Remember, we are dealing with one of those records. And as you can see, we are dealing with an order number, um, which is obviously going to be some sort of a string. Then we're dealing with a print number, which will be an integer. There's a quantity, which will be an integer. Um, be careful of the next one, the picture size. Although we see numbers there, there's also um, letters. So we it's only one letter, so we can use a character over there. The, fi the file name will obviously be a string and a four-digit integer number at the end. And they recommend field names. I would recommend that you use those exact ones because whoever's marking your paper, it'll be a lot easier for them to mark your paper and not miss anything that you might have written if you've used different file names. So let's go create this. So we're going to, in between the interface and the implementation we're going to set type and we're going to create a class now they called us they asked us to call it t order print and that is a descendant of the original class which is a t object which we write like that now just make sure you don't forget this there's no semicolon there but there is an end that we have to write all of our um methods between now our methods are two main methods that we get or two things that we normally put our private um spelled incorrect private and our public methods or fields. Now remember private means it can only be used within this unit. We cannot refer to it from outside this unit. The public is what we use to refer to how we access this unit or inside this unit. So the public thing, anything that's written under public will be accessed by any unit that's using this class. Private only within this class. So we want to create those fields privately, so we're going to use the names that they suggested. So we've got f order num, which we said was of a type of string. We could limit it to 10 characters, something like that, but it's not 100% necessary. So f order num, then we've got f print num, which is obviously the number that are being printed, that we said was an integer. Then we had f pick quantity, which was also a type of integer. Then we had f pick size. If you remember correctly, it could have been an integer or a single character. In this, so in this case, we're going to make it a char. Then we've got f pick file name. Don't know why they pick such long names for these things. And that would be a string. And then last but not least, we've got f 
epic file size and that was that four digit integer number okay happy with that so we've done the first question also a big tip with this type of question look at the mark allocation it gives you an idea of how many marks are needed and how much work you should be doing so for 10 things that we've got to do that actually looks like it should be suitable for 10 marks okay now next one we've got to write a constructor which takes all those values as input as, as per parameters yeah, it's got the word parameters or parameter size this constructor now all those values are going to be given as uh, parameters and then we will put them into the private fields so what we get as parameters is from the, the other unit and we will put that into the current fields that we've got in this class so that we're going to be accessed from outside so that's what we can write under here I'm going to write constructor you know it's spelled correctly but, uh, but because it's got bold I'm going to call it create now we are going to get uh, parameters for all of these now just so we don't get mixed up between the parameters and the fields I'm gonna put a P in front of these so P order num which we said would be of type string when you've got uh, parameters of different type remember you must put a semicolon between the two then we've got P print num which is of type integer now because I've got two integers coming up straight after each other I can actually write it like this so P pick quantity so I'm doing exactly the same as what we've got here. Instead of F's, I've got P's now. Now we've got P pick size, which was of type char. Then we've got, just to remind ourselves, P pick file name, which was of type string. And then last one of these was, the, I think, the pick file size. P pick file size of type integer hopefully I haven't made any mistakes it is possible but we'll check that now so there's my constructor that's just the declaration we need to actually write the code for it now so I'm going to press control shift C and there we go it actually takes me to this part then I know I've actually written that part correctly now please don't make this mistake it happens often people often get mixed up between the parameter and the actual field we are getting these parameters from the other program from the other um, unit that is using this class so we are getting that value and we want to put these values into here so we're not changing the parameters we're getting information from the parameters and putting them into our fields over here that are private so because we can use those private fields inside here I can say if order num now that's the field and that's going to get its value from the p order num parameter that's what makes it nice about keeping them very similarly spelt and we just know what the difference is between the two obviously that because they're both strings they will fit in fine all of these are the correct type for each type so they will fit in directly so you're literally just doing this f print num will obviously get the value from p print now, then we've got P or F pick quantity will get its value from P pick quantity. And then F pick size will get its value from P pick size. And so on and so on. You're getting the idea. Now I've just written the others in to save time. As you can see, all of these fields have now been called here and they get their values from each of the parameters. So that would be the question for 1.2. Now six marks seems reasonable to get for six marks. 1.3, 2.1.3, we need to get the file size in bytes. Now be very careful of this question. It says get the file size in bytes, return the size of the picture in bytes. They're trying to trick you here. It's not a very uh, big question. It's not a lot to do, but there is a little um, trick that you've got to do. Remember, if you read the question correctly, that this file size at the end here is in kilobytes. So we've got kilobytes. Now, if you know your computer terminology, um, one uh, kilobyte is the equivalent of 1,024 normal bytes. So we are actually going to use that field and multiply it by 1,024 just to get the right file size in bytes. So just remember that. That was a little trick that they did put in there. So we're going to 
it's obviously a field that we're going to access from outside so that's will be that's going to be returning a value so we're going to call, give it a function so it's going to be returning a value and we're going to call it the value that they said get file size in bytes again with the long names there's nothing that you have to give as input because you can obviously get that value from the pick size inside the private fields um, but we do have to return a value which is obviously going to be of type integer and obviously if I've typed it all correctly it'll take me straight here so all I'm going to say is result is equal to the value in the if pick file size and I'm going to multiply that by 1024 to get the number of bytes in that question okay so that's that one done now all of these that are coming up you'll see they're quite small so that if it's a get method it sometimes it's very simple it's just simply returning a value so the get order number so all it is return the order number so there's the order number all we are doing is returning the order number so it is quite easy to do as you can see by the mark allocation it should be quite simple so we go over here to the top we're going to create another public function this is going to return a value, so that's why it's going to be a function. And we said that it was going to be called get order number. Get order num. And that's going to return, and we know that order numbers of type string, so that's why we will make it a string. Okay, and all we do is result, we're returning that f order num. Simple as that. Next question. This one's a little bit more complicated, it's going to require a bit more code. There's another get method, so we're also returning a value, but we must get the pick size string. So they want us to return the word standard if it's a S, jumbo if it's a J, and so on and so on. So all we're going to do over here is again go, these are obviously going to be public fields that we're all creating. So this is also going to return a value. So that's going to be called pick get pick size. Well, I just can't remember what its name was. Let's go double check get pick size string get pick size string and that's going to return a string obviously it's going to return the word standard or something like that and let's run it and what we're going to do here is we're going to check if or where do we get the the character which is the pick size if pick size tells us if it's a j pick size for jumbo or so on and so on so let's go. We can do a simple if statement or a case statement. It's up to you. Um, I'll do an if statement just for simple mistake. So if the if pick size, which is character, if that is equal to a s, then result is equal to yes standard. I'm getting this information from this table over here. Obviously, if it's not that else and I'm actually gonna make my life a bit easier and just copy and paste this a few times if the pick size is a J then result is jumbo else if the pick size is uh, if I remember correctly you can always just check here a 5 if it's a 5 remember it's character so we can leave it like that then we return the word din a5 and then last but not least if it's a4 then we return a din a4 and that seems to be it